know, we did a walk of the community to figure out where things were located. And if I wanted to go find a banana or an apple or something like that, is that within my, within like, this is excellent. I, I just copied that actually, if you don't mind, but <laughs> not at all. <laughs> having, having the 15, 15 minute, you know, bike ride or a, a 10 minute walk, you know, are your resources within your area? Um, and then is it safe to do that in your area? So, so that's one of the things the students spoke up about too. You know, I don't feel safe walking in that area. So we took on as a teacher who did the virtual thing um, and worked from home, the food like insecurities and housing insecurities and you name it has just like quadrupled. It's been very, it's been a lot this year. I feel like I've done a lot more like dropping off clothes and food and water and things like that than the teaching aspect of what I do. What are the challenges and opportunities with the federal um, investments in infrastructure? Yeah, I think that's a really good question. I think, um, so obviously, you know, the, the way a lot of funding programs are structured, they're, they're not necessarily very conducive to, you know, more kind of creative and agile approaches like design thinking. But I do, I, you're right, I do think that the, those buzzwords are kind of beginning to be used and kind of thrown around in the federal space. I do know of a few pilot projects um, at the Federal Transit Administration and FHWA is doing a project on kind of like re-envisioning re transportation demand management approaches. And so you are beginning to see more, this incorporation of more innovative practices. And I think as that happens, we'll, we'll be kind of forced to rethink how, how the funding structures can better support these types of approaches. Trying to explain the stuff that 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 healthcare doesn't have a lot of time to explain while during your visits. So we talk about a lot of that too. But during the pandemic, we recognized that um, you know the community needed that more than ever. They needed that just that human connection. So we did our drop offs. We did you know just dropping off or just FaceTime just to let the pregnant mom know you're still not going through this alone. You know how can we make connections? How can we connect you to the places that that have what you need? Um, so that, that's kind of what I do with the Storks Nest as well, which is housed on St. Joe's campus simply because I work here and I ask for the space, but we're not connected with St. Joe's. So that's kind of what I do on that end as well. And how are you funded there? And it's all like nonprofit. Nobody's paid for anything. And wow. it's just, we saw a need. Wow. I was a mom at some point. Right. and decided to find you some, we gotta find you take some the lead on yeah. Autumn, I think you had some comments. Yeah, Autumn, about collaboration and how to... Partnership and... Yeah, so I think um, partnership would be great. We actually have in our building, um, our building is huge. You guys are welcome to come see our facility anytime, but we have a full kitchen. Um, we have a two-story building, but like focus groups for kids and parents, that's all stuff that we are talking about as an organization as well. Um, and then, you know, the work from home and, 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 and all of that pandemic influence um, even reduced then the ridership and so forth and so on. And, and, and it looks as though that's going to be somewhat sustained. And, and I'm wondering how they're going to reach an accord there to continue to um, get enough funding just to continue traditional services. So I, I think the answer to that is somewhere it lies between how we take advantage of work from home and learning from home to increase productivity mm -hmm. um, at the expense of, unfortunately, transportation, which, which when we talk about first responders and we talk about the, the core of um, you know, distressed cities, that's really a pain point. Yeah, and I, you know, I think another in, important consideration um, is climate adaptation and mitigation as well. And um, I think this is also a you know, a, kind of a watershed moment to really rethink how how we travel and and the contributions of our travel to the climate crisis. More than just uh, understanding that it's one of the few things naturally getting people to walk around downtown is oh, okay, this camera. Here. <laughs> uh, is that uh, it's it's this silly game that hundreds of millions of people like to play, and it's not being capitalized on. That that's one of the only things getting people to actually uh, interact <laughs> the with with the downtown area. Yeah, 
and that there aren't any businesses hospitable to people who are doing that who are just casually uh, traversing the area. Can I share? I got a super funny story with Pokemon. Awesome. Well, I, I not only work with kids, but we work with injuries from birth on up to, you know, to, to aging. So um, we were doing a senior driver event called Car Fit, where the, the driver would just come and get their car checked out. Like, so they came out to the park and they, and, and I had one driver that kept passing by. And so I finally stopped her. She was, she was an older driver. She, I stopped her and I said, Hey, are you coming to get your car fit? And she was like, no, I'm looking for Pokemon. So <laughs> she, she, she had to be like 65 years old, but she was looking for Pokemon. She was just driving, looking at her phone. So yeah, I invited her over. It, it, I invited her over and she you gave me her car fit. <laughs> Yeah, there, two people were looking for Pokemon that day, and one of them happened to join our car fit event for a senior driver. So, <laughs> anyways, it worked. Now you're on to something. <laughs> when you, I don't know if any of you actually played the game, but it's heavily integrated with your environment. Um, yeah. What you there, there, there are stops that you use to get items to progress in the game, and those are landmarks. That you you press on in the game uh, in the game, and it'll bring up a picture of say the, this crowfoot sign here or the uh, the Phoenix Center tower. It so it gets people involved in their their local infrastructure as well. Like we work, we've worked really closely with a professor at OU. Anna Lee Campos, and she couldn't be with us today, but we're help, we're working also to develop a virtual program and want to include her in any talks we have about partnership. Um, but last year we had a great talk with, with her students. We've done seven semesters of development work with her students and bringing them downtown and connecting them with the uh, Pokemon with Devin's initiative would be an interesting thing, but they, you know, they just have so many great ideas and of what they want to see. And um, so they'll be, they'll be participating um, as well. She does a program, Global Cities and Global Human Systems. Um, yeah, a quick one. Um, um, my name is Slim Ladef Malone. Um, I work at OSA. Uh, what right now I'm a welcome center service manager. I handle the programs, uh, the CARES program and the uh, EFSP program, and I do also do the LIT light, which we we help clients with their DTE, consumers energy, and sometimes water bills. So we're we're going into neighborhoods. You know, we're connecting the downtown to the neighborhood, going west up Pike Street, and we're attempting to have young people participate in the design of that. So anything that 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 also may have uh, from the summer learning program between now and September, if we could in inquire about any participation from maybe the kids that are involved or engaged in the summer program, it would be a, a great possibility, a great addition. Okay. Yeah, I can I can always ask. It sounds more like the like the Head Start program or the PAE program yeah. with the children. So okay. Probably get connected to them. I believe I can probably try to read somebody there to see how if they can contact either you or, or Monica and see if um they can you you guys can explain to them further what you want. I mean, how they can go about helping. Yep, that would be great. Awesome. That would be fantastic. We can do that. Yes. My husband's the technology coordinator over at PAE, uh, Mr. Barksdale. Oh, oh wow. wow. We're done. <laughs> <laughs> yes. We got a virtual program going. We, got, we have quite a lot of collaborative possibilities yeah, uh, flowing through here. 